Dan Johnson here at Air Venture 2011, still in the ultralight area, looking at a nice little airplane came right out of the backyard. Well, almost exactly. It's the backyard flyer. That's great. So maybe it flew out of the backyard. We're talking to Larry Smith here, and there's a whole bunch I don't know about this airplane, so I got a lot of questions. Let's okay. start right up here. What I've never seen this engine before. What what do we got here? We have a four-stroke 992cc uh, Generac engine, industrial. Uh, it's, a, it's a power generator. Power generators, Steiner tractors, uh, several several major brands that run this. An just industrial engine. It's a 33 continuous, 38 peak from the factory. We do quite a bit of modifications, custom carburetor, intake, headers. If we need more horsepower, we go ahead and flat top pistons. Uh, uh, custom made cams and we, we tune them up pretty good. We can get up to as much as 48 to 50 horse with a little work done to it. Now, is that right, really? And we, we run a belt drive, which gives us a little extra. We turn a good RPM and a really a nice size. Yeah, you got a nice big prop on it. What size is this? 70 inch prop. 70 inch prop. With 30 inches of pitch, turning the engine about 4,000. We get a really good performance. And they make the reduction drive yep. and they make the propeller. Yep. We are also Culver Props. We build the props in-house. We're Valley Engineering. We build the redrives in-house, and we add it all to our little Generac engine, and we have a really a potent little four-stroke, about the only one available. So you call us a backyard flyer, but uh, yeah. you do that because you're doing all of it in the backyard almost. Well, huh? basically, but... Uh, Not literally, I'm sure. Our, but... our runway is in our backyard, so <laughs> everything, we do all of our testing at home in our backyard. And I've been there, and I can tell you, he they has, do it right in their backyard. He has been there and seen our backyard. And, we and do, where is the backyard? The backyard is in Rolla, Missouri. It's a small university town in the centrally located in Missouri. Sounds great. So, uh, basic power on this is about 35 horsepower. Uh, basic, is, bake is, okay. basic is 40 and up to 48. Okay. Uh, and we, you're running in a single seater. Running in so a single seater. So, that's going to make this thing a pretty darn lively performer. We are a true legal ultralight at that. Is that right? Okay, you're at the 254 pounds, even with a four-stroke motor, even which with I see has an electric motor. start on it as well. Electric start, four-stroke, 20-amp alternator, and still legal legal ultralight. And you're getting in at 254 before fuel, is that we're, right? We're getting in at just under, we we actually have a ballistic parachute in it, which gives okay. us the yep. extra 24 pounds. You could be pounds. 278 then, so, so we're actually, on Friday before we left, we weighed 278.5. We still had two gallons of gas in it and two quarts of oil in it. <laughs> so we were about 12 pounds under the 278. Yeah, I'd say that's uh, that's well within the numbers. Then. Well within yeah, the numbers. Right and, and we've been working hard. We've got large large diameter 6061T6, but it's fairly thin wall. And uh, we, we get yeah, I had to ask you because the average person that comes up here and looks at this, I mean, I had to know better when I looked at it because it can't be, but most people go, my God, that's a, what is this, a bridge you have here? This is some steel stuff like I haven't seen on an airplane, but it's not steel. It's not steel. It's 6061T6 welded aluminum. And the whole thing is welded aluminum. Now, the whole I've heard thing. some stories about aluminum being pretty challenging to weld. It is. It is. My, my what's the challenge, and how? what do you have to do to make sure you've got it right? Uh, practice, practice, practice. <laughs> Well, you get quite a bit of it on this, it looks like. 15 so. years of experience, and uh, my son-in-law is uh, coming along. He's welding, I would say, better than I'm welding at this point with a couple years of experience. Yeah, it's a bit of an art form, isn't it? It is an art form. The actual welding it is not too bad, but making it pretty is the art form. Ah, is that right? And, okay. Uh, and uh, my, my son-in-law has appeared to be quite an artist. He's, he's welding it very pretty. I mean, I've always had good solid welds, but he's making prettier welds, and I'm a little envious of it. But, <laughs> hey, yeah. younger generation. Younger you know, generation. I'm glad, to, hey, I'm glad to hear it. Sharper eyes and steadier hands, I yeah, guess. Yeah. But yeah, he's, he's, I think, surpassing me in the welding category already, and we're putting together a pretty slick little outfit. Well, it but, makes the whole thing just look strong. Springs uh, something like wide diameter tubing to yeah. make give the people that kind of feeling. So well, I'm guessing people walk up and go, oh, my goodness, is this stronger than it needs to be? It, uh, it's plenty strong. Four, four G's strength in the wing. Okay. Well, actually, six, six uh, positive, four negative. Uh, we've got spring suspension, uh, the curved arch spring I suspension. See, yep, uh -huh. We have uh, about two inches of travel in the front nose wheel, which is steerable. Hydraulic disc brakes, tow brakes. And, and big tires and whatnot. I'm kind of amazed that you get this in the uh, 254 category. I'm, I'm delighted about that's it. That's not all of them, Daniel. That's, that's not, not all. all. They, There's they have, more. They have an old guy that's involved in this as well. Yeah. And one day he decided he wanted to fit this into a trailer. Yeah. Uh-oh. So, so 
It'll that won't fit into a trailer. On. That's not going to go on a trailer. It will fit in a trailer. Wait a minute. I see some extra stuff here. You, you must take this bungee cord off. Is that yeah. it? We That's take these, these four bolts out, slide the two ailerons now, back. Now, let's put your hand right up there by the bolt so we can see what we're talking about. There's one. There's, there's, there's two. Two here. There's three and there's four. Do those get captured in the video? Those come out. We release, release the aileron. Okay, so aileron comes completely free on both sides, I see, with a nice big pin there. We do have a pivot pin in the middle. Aha, uh -huh, okay. And a big large little turntable. A turntable. Oh, you sure do. And then we grab the wing by that tip out there. And and you also use it to hold the parachute bag. Right? Yes, yeah, we use it to hold the support. I mean, everything has to do dual purpose in an ultralight. Form follows function. Huh? We swing the wing around and set it on the tail. It's true. And I see back here on the tail, Dave, if you can follow us back here. First of all, it's kind of this uh, squared off tail, a little bit flattened tail here. Well, that, and you got this thing up on top, and that's got to do with the wing. Huh? That's where the wing sits. We reattach the bolts into the wing, put one back up here for just floppy support, and it's ready to be trailered around and put back so in the trailer. Uh, it's got a little bit of the auto gyro look up top because it doesn't go soaring up in the air, but it's got a lot of physical volume, uh, it looks like. Now, the tail dragger model will be taller in a standard form because the tail is on the ground, so the wing pivot's more level. But in a tricycle gear configuration, okay. we had to shorten our tail just a little and our, and our length just a little to get a level rotation. Well, you just gave away another secret there because what we're looking at here is a tri gear. But <laughs> yes, you got this available you just, just lately this as is a the, tail dragger as well. This is the first one. Yeah. This well, this one's a tri gear. The tri -gear. It has been a tail dragger all along. We've been, oh, I see. Yeah, okay. We've got 16 okay. tail draggers out. This okay. is our first tricycle. Now, okay, so when you fold the wing, I want to look underneath the wing, Dave. And I want to see where it is that it actually attaches. And there's no holes here, so it must not go this way. Yep. Swings from the left hip. These two. Okay. Swing and these around. are the places right here where you're yep. bolting it into the top of the yep. uh, tail then. Yep. And so now, how much farther out in front of the airplane does the right wing go then? Well, it would be from the center line. You put, uh, 12 feet that swing out, so it's roughly like nine, nine feet out. But well, we're standing here in front of a trailer. Is that how it got here? Yeah, okay, go so a 26 feet V nose trailer. Uh, 26 V nose trailer. Yeah, we got that'll, 20. Uh, that'll hold this whole airplane. The you whole got airplane. Hang now, how long does that process take? Four minutes. Four minutes. <laughs> and can you do it by yourself or do you need help? By yourself. By yourself. You can do it right now. Well, let's do it right now. Pin on the other side, you're disconnecting the aileron there so you don't jam up anything. Oh, okay, that just slides to the center on the inside. So the bungees actually do play a role here. Yeah, they actually do. Now, while he's doing that, I'm looking up inside the wing here. We have the same structure inside the wing as we see out here. What looks like this giant tubing is what makes the whole inside of this aircraft as well. This is all welded aluminum throughout. That's a good bit of welding. How much? How many hours are involved in all the welding? We turn them all out every two months. Every two months. So yeah. it's, uh, it's pretty labor. And you got your son in there welding, you know, night and day for two months, huh? Me and my son-in-law. Son-in-law it is. Okay. Yeah, Son-in-law, we turn them out every two months. Okay, the bolts are already out. The, the, the fastest we, we can build one in 28 days if we have no other interruption. <laughs> you mean like people out. come around shooting video of you? All right, now we get the first take Just lift it up a little bit. back there so it's just a little bit off the front and levered in the front and uh, with that, that structure I saw inside the wing you get this big huge wing here that real fat airfoil that also gives you a lot of strength a lot of strength that. and on a, tri on, a, on a tail dragger the, the gas tank will be in the wing ah it'd be in the wing so it, okay. it's hidden along with the parachute okay but your two your two attachments you would just put in the tail okay and then when it goes in the trailer that's also what you tie down with huh? And again, that's uh, hooking into some part of this uh, beefy structure. Yeah, I it goes right into the, 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 the front spot. And do you have to support the front of the wing at all? We use a, 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 a crow's foot type attachment to the front, one to the side and 
moved one up and one down to give it a stability. Oh, okay, just to kind of hold yeah. it in position. But you're not really having to support it this way. Not you're so much more than just going down the road, around. you want to keep it from hitting a good flop. Because you know, the one thing I know lever. is when you haul airplanes around in a trailer, more likely you'll damage them They'll, there than it damage them in They will fly flying. far take the worst beating in the trailer than they ever will in the air. Yeah. And this is, you know, you've got, you got uh, 13 foot of cantilevers, so you have to be kind of careful in hauling it. So just like a turntable, isn't that something? That's all there is to it. And, uh, and then putting the wings back in. Now, once you get the bolts back in, how do you know you got the bolts in all the way? Just run them down tight? It's just finger guide in plan. You got a lot, quite a bit of thread on here. So, yep. uh, you know, and, and it's a nice big, looks like a grade A type well, they bolt. use a coarse thread for the aluminum. Okay. So you and don't, you just don't weld it on a little thread. handle on there. A little there. handle. You, you guys it. are just welding fools here. We are welding. You, you love correct. your welder. What kind of welding are we talking about? We run a three. Three Lincolns, they're all TIG welders. TIG welding, huh? Two of the new 175s and one of the 185s. She wants to fly here. She's ready to go. <laughs> yeah, I didn't put the bolts in. Yeah, in fact, if, why don't you go ahead and put it back the way it was so we don't yeah. cause you any damage. I want to grab a picture of it like that before you do it. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I am impressed. This is a 103 airplane. I love 103 airplanes. This looks solid as a, well, you know, one of those places we talk about a lot. Yep. And, uh, you are doing all the welding, and you and your son-in-law, and you're putting these together, and you got 16 of them out there, but all that wouldn't have happened except for? My dad, the engineer. We, we do have a mechanical engineer on staff. It's my dad. He's 78 years old. He's also our test pilot. And we've seen him out here flying around you've in all variety of things. Just about, we? you've seen him. I, we was just counting today. I think we've got 19 mugs, which means we brought 19 different, or not, at least 19 airplanes up here over the years. And, and you know, he'd come here one year, and the next year it looked different. Next year it looked different. This guy just eat it. Does he ever sleep? Oh, yeah. Uh, early in the mornings, real early. He kind of sleeps. <laughs> he runs the evening. He runs the banker's hour shift, but he's got a great mind, and he's still really sharp. Obviously so. He man. comes up with all this stuff. Uh, ben and James just make it happen. That's well, kind of uh, that's, so. a, that's a good combination. So and, and you've given us a lot of details here, but there's more that people always want. you got a place on the web. What do you, where, where do people go to find you and to get in touch with you? You can find all of our information at www.coverprops.com, just like the propeller. And... Uh, that's what we do. We build propellers, redrives, engines, and planes. About the only thing you have to go out and buy is some tires and a parachute, huh? We got that too. <laughs> tires are on it. The chute's installed. We don't we don't sell anything without a BRS. And so, or, what is the price of the whole package? Uh, this one's about twenty thousand with doors and ready to fly. And ready to fly. Ready twenty thousand four-stroke engine, electric start, swing wing. That includes a parachute. That includes a parachute. If you're sell. looking for a bargain, you shop at my door. So Dan, have you got any information on this airplane? I don't, I'm sure great to say, but that's changing. I'm going to have it pretty soon, so uh, and when I get some more information, we'll cover some more of this, and I hope okay. to go for a flight on it. It'll be available on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. This video and many other videos available on aircraftreporters.tv. Subscribe to the Light Sports and Ultralight Flyer web video magazine with hundreds and hundreds of videos now online, including air show coverage, Rotax engine tech tips, Rotax 377, 447, 503, 532, and 582 engine rebuilding videos each two hours in length, propeller maintenance, advisors, and repairs, VRS parachute saves, Bing carb updates, and much, much more. Get a yearly subscription at www.ultralightflyer.com.